This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. Hello there again, everyone. This is Cameron Harris, back with another episode of SketchUp, a 3D Toolbox. In this episode, we're going to be talking about another drawing tool in SketchUp, the Circle Tool, which you'll be using a lot if you're building anything with columns or towers or spiral staircases, anything circular. Now, there are a couple things you need to keep in mind with the Circle Tool, and it acts slightly differently than the rest of the tools. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So over here I've got my circle tool project opened up and this is just a blank project and we're going to start first of all by checking out what exactly the circle tool does. So the first thing you need to know of course is where the circle tool is and it's up here where the rest of the drawing tools are. It strangely enough is the one with the big circle for the icon so and you can see if you hover over it it says circle. You can find it here in the toolbar. You can also find it over here in the tool palette or, and this is my personal favorite way of getting to all the tools, use the built-in keyboard shortcut which for the circle tool is the letter C. So just tap the C key and whatever tool you're in you automatically switch to the circle tool. So you can see here that this is what uh, your cursor turns into when you switch to the circle tool. It's a pencil, means you're drawing something. All the draw tools for the most part have a pencil but the circle tool has a little faint outline of a circle around it. And the way you draw a circle with the circle tool is you just start wherever you want the center of the circle to be. So let's say I want the center of the circle to be oh, right here, for example. I would go here, I would click once, and now you can see I'm drawing a circle that starts at that very point, that's its center, and I can make it bigger by moving my cursor away from it, and you can see there's a line connecting my cursor to the center of the circle. And I can make it bigger, make it smaller. I can, of course, uh, snap to an axis, which is my personal favorite way of doing it. Snap it to either the left or the right axis to do that. I can also snap it to the uh, up and down axis if I want to. And you can see here that I just click once and it instantly creates the circle and it has a face and everything. But just like with the arc tool, which we learned about in our last episode, you'll notice, particularly when we zoom in on it, this circle is not made up of one seamless line. Although it acts like one seamless line, like if we just select anywhere, click anywhere on the line, it selects the entire border. But here's the deal. This, like all curved lines in SketchUp, is actually made up of many straight lines that are just all sort of arranged in a circular pattern. And you can really see it here. There's, there's one point, two points, three points, four points. This circle, by default, circles are made up of 24 line segments, which is a good starting point because it's a nice balance between looking very smooth and at the same time not having too many faces. Remember, when we talked about the arc tool, you have too many of these edges and these lines and these faces in SketchUp and it will start to bog down, particularly if you have a slightly lesser system. Uh, so a very good way of dealing with this is to just, for the most part, leave it at default. But let's say you're making a really big circle. If you make a really big circle, it stops looking like a circle and more like a polygon because you can really see these points. So just like with the arc tool, you'll notice that if I move into the selection tool and then back to the circle tool, before I draw anything with the circle tool, you can see that my little measurements box down in the bottom right hand corner now says sides. And it says 24. That's the default. Now I can enter in whatever number I want into there, and that will be the number of sides that the circle I draw next will have. So let's say, since this is a larger one, I want to have some more sides. Let's say maybe I want to go up to 36. I just type in 36, enter. And now when I click and drag out, you can see the circle looks much smoother because it's made up of more line segments. I could also make it maybe uh, maybe a little bit more. Let's try maybe 40 sides. Click and draw out. 
nice and smooth. That looks pretty good for that size. Now, speaking of sizes, let's talk about how you can control the size of this circle. Let's say, let's say I just go back to the default of 24 sides here. So I'm drawing a circle here, and you'll notice that once I start drawing, just like with the rectangle tool, the line tool, my little measurements box changes. And in now it says radius. Now, for those of you who don't remember, the radius of a circle is not how wide a circle is, it's half as wide a circle. So basically, it's the measurement from the center of the circle out to its edge. So let's say, for example, you wanted to have a six foot circle, a circle that's six feet wide total. You would make the radius of that three feet because three is half of six. So here I could just enter in three apostrophe. Remember, three and then the apostrophe makes it a foot. Enter. And that right there is a six foot circle. If I wanted maybe a nine foot circle, I would just click, draw it out. And then I would enter in half of nine. So I could say 4.5 feet. Or I could also uh, do 4 feet 6 inches. Enter. And there's my 9 foot circle. Now, when I'm measuring, or I'm sorry, when I'm making my circle, I always try to have my line, that little guide line in the middle of the other big red line, I can have that be pointing wherever I want, but I always try to have it snap to an axis. Because you'll notice that if I zoom in here, you'll notice that my cursor is always positioned at the, where those lines, those outer lines, two of those lines intersect. So it's at a point where one of the 24 sides or 36 sides or whatever intersect. And by having that always locked to an axis like this, that just kind of helps keep the circle very simple. So that way all of my circle's edges are all facing the same way, if that makes sense. When you start to deal with a lot of these circles, particularly if you have circles, for example, interlocking with each other. So for example, if I were to draw a circle here, have it snap to the red axis, and another circle here inside of it, also locked to the red axis, you can see that now I could, for example, select this middle face and delete it. Now I've got this ring. And you can see if I zoom in on these edges, these sides, these lines, really, they're all lining up. But if I were to, for example, draw my center circle without any constrictions and then delete it, you can see that the lines don't really match up. It looks kind of like a, a very jaggedy line. A very, it's not clean. It's not straight. It doesn't really look very nice when you move into it. So I always try to keep mine uh, constrained. Uh, to an axis. doesn't really matter if it's the red axis or the green axis because if you're using an even number of sides, and I do recommend you always use an even number of sides, again, keeps things very simple. So don't use 35 sides, for example. Instead, you could just use 36. Just round it up or down to the nearest even number. So those are some good tips to th think of when you're doing circles, and uh, very good for doing towers, columns, circular staircases, all kinds of great stuff. So remember, the one thing you have to keep in mind with the circle tool is to always keep a nice balance between the smoothness of the circle and how many lines and therefore faces there are. Because the more lines you have, the more faces you're gonna have when you extrude that into 3D. So I hope you found this episode useful. Good luck playing around with the circle tool. In the meantime, you can visit our website at www.harwoodpodcast.com. There you can check out our show notes, download lesson files, participate in the forums, all kinds of great stuff. And if you have any questions or comments for us, send us an email at harwoodpodcast at comcast.net. Until next time, I'll just say goodbye and good modeling.